Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at home for this special online worship experience. Hey, as always, it's an honor to have you join with us here at Rethink Life Church. And I'm gathered here in our home with some of our team. And team, would you give those that are watching us today a round of applause and just welcome them into our worship experience. But we are in week two of a new series that we began called The Prayer Dare. It's a 30-day prayer challenge, and we're challenging you along with everyone to take 30 days. In fact, we're circling our greatest dreams and our biggest fears in prayer. And we're believing God in these 30 days to move and to work and to act on our behalf. But most importantly, we're just pressing in and we're believing God to do what only he can do. And if you've never prayed before, this is a great opportunity for you to take the prayer dare challenge. And uh, we just encourage you to go online. In fact, uh, if you even want to text us uh, the number there on the screen. Uh, It will give you the opportunity to access our Prayer Dare journal. You can also go to RethinkLife.com. There's a simple PDF download. It has a daily scripture verse for the 30 days, a day, uh, each day of the week. We're actually uh, memorizing scripture. We're working through a prayer journal, and we're experiencing this collectively as a group of people. So we encourage you just to join in with us and let's see what God will do. Well, because today is week two, I want to just drill a little deeper and really ask, I think, um, an important question that in some ways may seem somewhat of a no-brainer, but at at the same time, I think there's still a lot of questions as it relates to why prayer is so important. I mean, in many ways, just from a, I guess, just a, just a, a way that we probably would respond by answering that question is like, well, you know, uh, I guess when I need help, I'll, I'll call out to God. But there are some very specific reasons why prayer is very important. In fact, today we're going to be looking at four of them. Now, before we unpack what these four reasons are, let me just say this. Suppose Jesus were to come to your house today. Okay, now wrap your mind around this for a moment. Suppose Jesus were to come to your house today and you had 15 minutes one-on-one with Jesus and you could ask him anything. Let me ask you, what would you ask him for? That's a huge question. I mean, I've been, I've been processing that all week long. Like, wow, I only get one, one request? I mean, I'd have a laundry list. You know what I'm saying? If I had 15 minutes. Well, whether you realize it or not, We all have that opportunity each and every day with Jesus. As a matter of fact, in excuse me, in Luke chapter eleven, the disciples of Jesus had this opportunity. They spent time with Jesus, and one of the one of the disciples even specifically asked Jesus, "Lord, teach us how to pray." In fact, in verse one in Luke chapter eleven, here's what. Uh, the scripture teaches us. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Of course, he was referring to John the Baptist. So here, the disciples who had been walking with Jesus, spending time with Jesus, I mean, they had access to Jesus, okay? (laughs) Jesus was God in the flesh, in human form. So here they are spending time with Jesus. They could have asked him anything, but the one thing that they desired more than anything was for Jesus to teach them how to pray. Now, what's interesting to me is that here they were walking with Jesus. They saw with their own eyes the miracles that Jesus performed. I mean, he healed the sick. He he literally, um, you know, helped blind eyes be opened. They saw, you know, Jesus walk on the water. They saw Jesus, you know, raise dead people back to life again. They were there when Jesus preached the greatest sermon of all time, known as the Sermon on the Mount. So notice they didn't go to Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, uh, you remember when you walked on water? Could you, like, show me how you did that? (laughs) Or uh, Jesus, um, it kind of freaked everybody out when you raised that dead person back to life. Um, I'd like to know how to do that. I mean, can you imagine? They could have asked Jesus anything, and yet the one thing that they desired most was for Jesus to teach them how 
to pray. And I think one of the reasons why, above everything else, the disciples wanted Jesus to teach them how to pray is because they saw and they witnessed the results that Jesus got when he prayed. So when you think about it, man, if you want results in your life, if you want to see a life change, if you want to experience miracles, if you want to see God do the impossible, well, think about it. He's just one prayer away. I just believe that answer that we're looking for, that we're seeking for, whatever it is that perhaps we're desiring for, it could be maybe you're Maybe one of those big dreams, goals, you know, aspirations you have, or it could be something that just weighs heavy on you. It could be a burden. It could be, you know, a source of pain in your life. It could be an addiction, a stronghold. It could be something from your past. It could be a, a fear, just a phobia. It could be a source of intimidation that maybe the enemy has used to discourage you and defeat you and, defeat you and even overwhelm you. And yet, with all of that in mind, I believe with all of my heart, Jesus wants to teach you and he wants to equip you on how to get results from spending time with him through prayer. So today, we're going to unpack these four things. Now, what's interesting is that in John chapter 13, 14, 15, and 16, in those four chapters, Jesus is reinforcing to his disciples. I mean, all throughout their time together, throughout these conversations, Jesus is basically giving them a full warning just so you know, I'm here on mission. My mission is to seek and to save the lost. Yeah. I'm going to die on a cross. They're going to put me into a grave. And then three days later, I'm going to come back to life. I'm going to hang out for another 40 days. And then I'm going back to be with my father. Okay, that's my plan. Just so you all know, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to go down. And I just want you to know this. In fact, I want to remind you over and over and over, this is my plan. This is why I'm here. This is what's going to happen. Well, they heard that time and time again. For some reason, it didn't sink in. And so Jesus, once again, is reinforcing this. And here's the thing that's interesting. Jesus reminded them, even though when I go back to be with my Father in heaven, even though I'm no longer going to be here physically, I will still be here with you spiritually because I'm going to send my spirit to live and indwell inside of you. So therefore, you will always be with me. You will, you will always have access to me. And so because of that, think about that for a moment. God is not just some distant God. Jesus is not just some, you know, figurative, you know, figure of imagination. No, Jesus came to earth so that he could relate to you and to me, so that we could have a relationship with him, so that we could be reconnected with the Father through that relationship. It's why Jesus came to die. He mm -hmm. paid your sin, paid the price for your sin and for mine, and he was raised back to life so we could know forgiveness, have salvation, have a relationship, relationship with him, and have the promise of eternal life in heaven. So with that in mind, Jesus, once again, is reinforcing to his disciples, just so you know, this is exactly the way things are going to happen. But even though I'm gone physically, I'm going to remain with you spiritually, and I'm going to send my spirit to live inside of you. So here are four reasons why prayer is so vitally important. And the first, if you're taking notes, is this, and that is prayer is an act of dedication, Prayer is an act of dedication. In other words, as his followers, as believers in Jesus Christ, it is our way of demonstrating, de demonstrating our complete dependence upon him. In other words, what we're doing is we're saying, God, I'm devoting my life and I am putting my complete dependence upon you for everything that I am, everything that I have, because I cannot do this alone. Yeah. We need God's help. And so it's an act of a dedication. You know, I'll never forget um, our son, Luke. He's our youngest. When he was a, a little boy, he had a little toy, a uh, little laptop computer, and he loved playing with that thing. I'll never forget, uh, it had a little power cord, you know, that uh, attached to the back of the computer. And then, of course, it had the plug that you plugged into the wall. And so one day we were in uh, one of our, our daughter's room. I think it was our daughter um, Rebecca's room, and we were all gathered in there, and, and we were talking. And Luke was on the floor playing with that little computer. But what he was trying to 
would do is he was trying to plug his computer in because it wouldn't work unless it was connected to the power cord. And so when he plugged the back end of the cord into the back of the computer, what would happen is it would pull out the plug from the wall. So he would go over to the wall and then he would plug the, he, he would put the cord back into the plug or put, put the plug back into the wall, I should say. But when he did that, it unplugged the other end from the computer. So he would go back and forth and back and forth. And we began to see what was going on. It became just so hilarious. We were just trying not to bust out in, you know, laughing because we didn't want to hurt his feelings. But he was so focused on what he was doing, is tr- concentrating so hard on trying to figure out what was going on. While all that time, he was literally just inches away from me and my wife, Michelle, and our other two daughters. And all he had to do was just stop what he was doing, look up to us, and ask for help. And we could have easily helped him. But that is a picture of what happens with so many of us in life is that we become self-reliant. We become determined to do things on our own strength. We become so focused on doing it our way, we're bent on making things happen to to the point to where what happens, we literally wear ourselves out. We get tired, we get frustrated, and sometimes we get angry because things aren't working out as we'd hoped, or maybe as, you know, we're thinking, well, man, I've worked so hard, why aren't things coming together? And what happens is, well, we're trying to put all the effort and all the energy into doing it ourselves rather than just saying, God, I need you. God, I, I, I need you to do what I can. God, I am so short you know, sighted, and God, I'm so limited. I don't, I don't see as you see. I don't think as you think. God, I can't do what you do. Therefore, God, I need you to do what I can't. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important that when we see prayer, we see prayer as an act of dedication. It's an yeah. opportunity for us to express our complete dependence upon God. Yeah. Yeah. And so in John chapter 15, verses 5 through 7, here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Notice carefully. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and notice it will be granted. What an incredible promise that Jesus gave us. And here's what you need to understand. What you need to understand is that when we are walking in alignment with God's good, pleasing, and perfect will, And we are living a life of obedience where we are literally living our lives according to the truth of God's word. Well, here's the key. When we are in alignment with God's good, pleasing, and perfect will, and we are abiding in him each and every day by living out his word, his truth in and through our life, what does he say? We can ask anything we want. What does he promise to do? He promises to answer those prayers. I think it's important you realize, yes, God will answer our prayers, but he won't bless disobedience, okay? I just want to make sure that you're, we're, we're, we're real loud and clear on that, okay? Because we have to do our part. We have to live a life that is fully pleasing to God, and that's one of the reasons why it's even more important that we express our dependency upon God. Why? Because we are sinners in need of a Savior. Yeah. Man, the Bible says there's none righteous, not even one. I don't care how good you may think you may be. If you're anything like me, man, I got a laundry, I have a laundry list of inadequacies and insufficiencies and mistakes and failures and things that I am guilty of. I'm so thankful that I have a God who loves me in spite of my sin. He's forgiven me. But more importantly, what he longs for me is just to be in a right relationship with him. And when I do that, He promises me that he's going to take care of me. He's going to bless me. He's going to provide for me. He's going to protect me, and he'll do the same for you. And so it's important that we understand that just like a tree and a branch, you know, anytime a branch is connected to a tree trunk, that's the source of nutrients. That's 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 the life supply, if you will, of all the branches, the offshoots of that trunk. 
But if you cut off one of those limbs, one of those branches, what are you doing? You're actually cutting off the life support. You're cutting off the, the nutrients. You're, you're cutting off that lifeline of support. The same is true in our relationship with God, specifically as it relates to our prayer life. So when we try to take matters in our own hands and when we become self-reliant and we become dependent upon ourselves to make things happen, what do we do? We're literally cutting ourselves off from the power supply that God gives to us through his word. What happens when we get disconnected from God, what did Jesus say? Well, we can't do anything. So therefore, we wither and we lose all power. So remember, no prayer, no power. So if we want the power supply to be activated in our life, then we got to walk in accordance to his word, be in alignment with his will, and we have to pray and ask God to do what we could never do on our own. So prayer is an act of dedication. Number two, prayer is an act of communication. You know, when you think about it, most of our problems in life probably are due to communication problems. Mm -hmm. So if you got problems going on between you and your spouse, chances are maybe it's because you're not talking, you know, well with one another. If you got problems with a coworker at work, you know, well, chances are you're just not on the same page. You're not communicating with one another. If you're a parent, you got problems with one of your kids, chances are, again, you're just not on the same page. Maybe you're not connecting. You're not communicating, seeing, you know, maybe Maybe from one another's point of view. And so most problems are a result of communication problems. Mm-hmm. Well, how in the world can we expect to see the problems in our lives solved if we're not in constant, clear communication with God the Father? Mm-hmm. And so we have to understand that if we really want God's will for our life, if we want to see you know, God act on our behalf, then we must be in constant, consistent communication with him. You will never understand God. You will never understand his will for your life unless you learn to communicate with him on a daily basis. Here's what the scripture says. This is what Jesus said in John 15, verses uh, 15 and 16. He said, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Wow. You know, it's hard in many ways, to kind of wrap your mind around the idea or even the thought that God not only hears our prayers, but God wants us to come to him with whatever need, challenge, you know, hurt, disappointment, whatever it is that we're facing, God wants us to come to him. Yeah. And here's what you need to understand. When he sees you, by the way, He's called you, he said. He's chosen you. Chosen you. Why? Because he wants a relationship with you. He made you so he could be in relationship with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so because he wants to be in relationship with you, he sees you differently. He sees you as one of his own. He sees you. In fact, he calls you your, his friend. So think about that. He sees us and he's chosen us to be in relationship, to be in friendship with God. Well, when you're in a relationship with someone and you're in, you have a friend, what do you do? You want to help your friend. You want to help the people who, who you believe know you and care about you and are interested in you the most. Well, nobody is more interested in us than God. Yeah. And that may be hard to even wrap your mind around that the God of the universe, the God of all creation is interested in the details of your life. Why? Because you matter to him. And so therefore, we just have to understand that when we come to God in prayer, what we're doing is we are communicating with him about everything that's on our mind and on our heart. So please understand this. Prayer is not a, re- is not a religion nor is it a ritual. Prayer is based on a relationship between you and 
our Heavenly Father. So prayer is an act of dedication. Prayer is an act of communication. But number three, the third reason why prayer is so important is because prayer is an act of supplication. In other words, the word supplication simply means request. And when you think about, um, you know, the whole subject of prayer, prayer also gives us peace of mind. Now, we're living in some very unusual times in our world. We're living in a day and age where there's a lot of unrest in our world and in our culture today. So if there was ever a time when people needed a sense of peace of mind, it's now. Well, guess what? The Word of God and being in communication with God in prayer is one of, the greatest, one of the greatest stress relievers we could ever have. In other words, it's one of the best things we could do to give us peace of mind and peace of heart. Yeah. And that's what Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7 says. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. Notice, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then notice, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Man, can you imagine if we would just take a chill pill (laughs) each and every day and we would learn to worry less and pray more? Can you imagine what kind of peace would guard our hearts and our minds by placing our total dependence upon God be in constant communication, abiding in him, staying connected, plugged into the power source, the life supply, Mm -hmm. and living by faith, not by sight, but by faith, knowing that God is in control of the things that are out of control in my life or things that I don't have control over. Because we don't have control over anything. (laughs) But the good news is, we know the one who's in control. Amen. And so he wants to replace whatever fear or maybe a sense of panic with his perfect peace. Mm-hmm. And so with that, prayer is an act of supplication. Now, it is through asking that's the key. It is through asking, and that's when, when God moves. That's when he responds and he acts on our behalf. So the, as the Bible says in James, you have not. Why? Because you, you ask, ask not. not. So we have to ask. It's kind of like the... The, the man who went to heaven and he was, you know, given a tour of heaven. He sees these incredible warehouses just packed with unbelievable stuff. I mean, all these incredible blessings and gifts. And I mean, literally just all the good things he could have ever dreamed about while he was on earth. And yet here they were in all of these warehouses and he's asking Jesus, what what is all this stuff? And Jesus said, well, each of those items has a tag that we've placed on them. And he says, it has three words, never ask for. And the man went to all of those things and he's turning over those tags. And there's that statement, never asked for, never asked for, never asked for. <laughs> Imagine what God could do if we just asked him wow, for the things that we could never provide on our own power. Wow. Well, here's what the scripture says. I love what Jesus said in this, in this statement. In Matthew 7, verse 7, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. Mm -hmm. The great preacher, some consider him to be the prince of preachers, one of the greatest preachers of all time. His name was C.H. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, and he made this statement, God never shuts his storehouses until we shut our mouths. Mm -hmm. Wow, let that sink in for just a moment. Psalm 84, verse 11, the Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. And I think the second portion of that is the key of doing what is right. So we have to do what is right. And if we do what is right, God says he will withhold no good thing from us. Why? Because he loves us. He wants to bless us. He wants to take care of us. He wants to protect us. He wants to provide for us. Why? Because we are his own. If we know him as our Lord and Savior, we are his children. And because like any good father wants to take care of his children and provide for them. You say, well, I've asked and I haven't seen God move. I, I, I've, I've literally, I've believed God for things and I've asked God for things. I've prayed. I've been praying for a long time. Well, join the club. 
<laughs> I've been asking for God for a lot of things for a long time, and he still hasn't answered my prayers. Does that mean I'm just going to throw my faith out the window and just call it quits and say, this stuff doesn't work? No, I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to keep seeking. I'm going to keep knocking. I'm going to keep trusting. I'm going to keep believing because you know what? What may be a long time to me may not be very long to God. And you know what? It may not be in the best timing for me. It may not be according to God's will. We're going to talk more about this in the coming weeks. That's why you need to stay tuned because we're going to be asking the question, what do you do when God doesn't answer prayer? Or how do you know if it's not God's will? We're going to answer those questions in the coming coming weeks. Mm -hmm. But we can't throw in the towel on our faith and call it quits. we got to keep, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking, right. keep believing. Yeah. Be persistent in prayer because that's all a part of supplication. Yeah. Amen. And then the fourth thing, the fourth thing is this, and that is prayer is an act of cooperation. Can you believe the creator, the designer of the universe has invited us to be in commission with him, to be his teammate, to be a part of his business. And that is to seek and to save that which is lost. He's gifted us, he's called us, he's placed passions in our hearts to do things that he has uniquely wired us to do in this life so that we could make an eternal difference in the lives of other people. I love the story of George Mueller. I will close with this. George Mueller, he was a great evangelist um, in the uh, country of England. And uh, he not only was a great evangelist, but he also started an orphanage for children. He literally raised millions of dollars and he never asked people for a single penny. The money just came in. Why? Because he was a man of prayer. And he believed because he was in partnership with God and because he was in commission with God and because he was a part of God's greater plan and purpose that God would provide for his needs. And as a result, God did the impossible. God just laid it upon the hearts of other people. God moved in the hearts of other people to act, to meet needs, to supply the impossible. And I'm thinking to myself, well, man, I want some of that action. Man, that'd be, man, can you imagine? Just, I mean, what would happen if we stopped talking and just started praying? You know what I'm saying? You know, there's a time when we need to, we need to ask. I believe that. But at the at the end of the day, you know, we also need to pray and ask God to prepare the hearts of those that maybe He wants to be a channel of blessing through. And maybe God is speaking to you. And maybe we have to ask ourselves, that's the reason why here at Rethink Life Church, when we talk about giving, we talk about, you know, offering, we talk about our tithes, we never say, you need to do this. We simply say, you pray, you ask God what he would have you do. That's between you and the Lord. And God will teach you. He'll show you. He'll impress upon you what it is he is leading you to do. And when we respond in faith and obedience, not only are we blessed, but we get to be a blessing, a channel of blessing Amen. into the lives Amen. of other people. So with that said, John 14, verses 12 through 14 says it this way. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, anyone who believes in me will do the same works that I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask me for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So at the end of the day, God is inviting us. He is saying to us, come to me, ask me, depend upon me. Let me show you what I'm capable of doing. And when we do that, when we are cooperating with God and we are walking in his will and we are, listen, we are pursuing the things that matter to God. In other words, when God's will becomes our will, when God's desires become our desires, when God's priorities become our priorities, when his agenda becomes our agenda, I'm telling you, God begins to move. Why? Because we're in cooperation with him. We're partnering with the God of the universe, the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-sovereign God. So with that in mind, let me ask you a question. What is keeping you from asking God to do the impossible? What is keeping you from taking this prayer dare 
30 days of seeing God work on, on your behalf, literally your greatest dreams, your greatest fears. Imagine what God would do. I encourage you even now, just text that number. Text RTL prayer to 97,000. Text, just text me. RTL prayer to 97,000. And let us know what you're believing God for. You got to let us know so we can stand with you and cooperate with you and believe and agree together in prayer that God is going to move. So send us your prayer requests and then also send us your praise reports because nothing inspires and motivates, motivates us more to pray more than answered prayer. So let me encourage you. Let's begin praying. Let's activate our faith. Let's take this prayer dare challenge and see what God will do. You know, speaking of co cooperation with God, I believe some of you that are watching this, especially for those of you that maybe have been a part of Rethink Life Church or maybe have found yourself somewhat disconnected, maybe been out of church for a while and you're thinking to yourself, man, I need to get reconnected. Yeah. I need to plug back in. I need, to, I need to get back into the things that brings joy and fulfillment to my life. I really want to make a greater impact with my life. Well, I want to encourage you to join me on August the 16th for something we're calling Heart and Soul. It's just a night of vision. And not only are we going to give an update on everything going on and what we believe God is leading us to do between now and the end of the year, but we're also going to be coming alongside to help you, to equip you, and to train you. Why? Because we can't do life alone. We need people in our lives. We need to be in circles with other brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we're going to grow together, learn together, pray together. We're going to do ministry together. We're going to make a difference together as we are in cooperation with God and in cooperation with God's plans and purposes. So August 16th, Listen, whatever you do, don't miss that. Sign up. Go to our website. Sign up. you got to sign up to be a part of that. It's a Zoom event. It's going to be incredible. Well, here's what I want to close with, and this is a before I pray, and that is D.L. Moody once said, he's a great, great preacher and evangelist, one of the greatest of all time. He said, every great movement of God can be traced to a single praying, kneeling figure. My prayer is that that'll be us that we'll be that single person, that kneeling figure that is crying out to God, saying, God, as Isaiah said, here I am, send me. Here I am, use me. God, use me to be your hands, to be your feet, to be your voice, to be your heart. God, use me to make a difference like only you can. Let's bow our heads together in prayer. And as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I just want to invite you, wherever you are, if you're by yourself or with maybe your spouse or your family, can I just invite you today to just pause in your heart for just a moment. Just set aside whatever distractions or things that maybe could potentially keep this moment from being a moment between you and God. And would you just simply ask the question, God, will you use me? Will you use me? Here I am. I'm available. You know, maybe as you begin to sense God leading you and speaking to you about maybe your next step in your spiritual journey, maybe it's getting plugged back in church, maybe it's connecting with a small group of people, maybe your next step is just spending more time with God. Maybe it's taking this prayer dare journey together between now and the end of the month. Whatever it is, just say, God, will you please use me? And then others of you, of, of you that are watching today, you know what, maybe what's missing, honestly, between you and the Lord, if you were to be very vulnerable and transparent, maybe what's missing is just that relationship. Maybe you've been trying to do things in the form of religion but we are not talking about religion. We're talking about a real relationship with a heavenly father who loves you and gave his son Jesus to die for you. So I just want to invite you right where you are. If you don't have that peace, if you don't have that assurance in your heart that you have a relationship with Jesus, would you right now just pray to him and invite him to be your Lord and Savior? He says, for whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So right now, would you call upon him? I'll lead you. Just pray something like this. Just say, dear God, I confess to you that I'm a sinner and I turn from my sin 
Jesus, I believe that you died on a cross and you rose again just for me. And today, by faith, I invite you into my life to forgive me and to save me and to change me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Now, if you just prayed that prayer just then, I just want to say congratulations because you became a part of a spiritual family known as the body of Christ. And we just want to welcome you into this new spiritual family. In fact, let's give those that just prayed that prayer a round of applause and celebrate with them. And we would love to know that you prayed that prayer. And all you have to do is just simply uh, text the word, I I decided. If you'll just text those words, I decided uh, to that number there, 97,000 or that other number, you can text that there, uh, that information there on the screen. We'll send you a form. You can fill it out, submit it back to us. We'll shoot you a little booklet that will walk you through your next steps. And we would encourage you to sign up for Starting Point, something new and super exciting that we are going to be rolling out the first Sunday of September. So mark your calendars for that. It's a starting point for you to begin living a life of fulfillment and joy unlike you've ever yeah. experienced. Hey, we love you guys. Don't miss next week. Click those share buttons and make sure to invite people to join you as we continue in our prayer dare journey.